2 through 6. Matthew 11, verses 2 through 6. Amen. This is what the scripture says. Now, when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Amen. Amen. I want to preach today with the help of the Lord on this title, Everything Isn't Terrible. Amen. Everything isn't terrible. Now, I don't know about you, but for the last month, I've seen everything on TV about the impeachment. I've heard people call each other names. I've, I've seen all kinds of things said about this person and that person. And it's easy for us at times to, to sit at McDonald's and go, boy, it's just terrible. I tell you, the government's so corrupt. And uh, listen, I, I'm not denying the fact that there probably is some corruption in our government. I see the state and the condition of our world. I can talk all day long about how bad things are. I can tell you about our school systems and how things uh, are creeping into the school system that should not be there. I can tell you uh, about all the things that are wrong in this world. Uh, but I want to tell you today, I want to preach to you that everything isn't terrible. Amen. Amen. Uh, the world can say what they want, but God's people have a right to lift their hands and say, listen, I've heard the good news. I've heard, it's not just good news, it's great news. Amen. That we have things to look forward to. We have blessings within our life and we have great news that we have heard. It isn't all terrible out there. And, and God forbid that the saints of God would begin to wag their heads and say, oh, it's all terrible. Everything is going to pot and everything is bad because I have believed in the hope of the gospel and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and, and there's hope in my heart and joy in my mind because it isn't all terrible. It's all in how you look at things. Yep. Amen. Amen. We do live in trying times. Americans are choosing. Listen to what I'm saying here. Because if we're not careful, the church will fall in to the trap that, that whoever it is in their ivory castle is setting up for us. Somebody up there is saying, if I can make this group mad at this group, then I'll get this group to do what I want. Listen, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Before any of that, you're a Christian. I don't care what side of the political aisle you are on. You're first a Christian. And it doesn't matter how you feel about how your tax dollars are spent and, and what is going on in the world. Listen, the, we're Christians and anger should not rise in, up in our heart. And we should not allow those who manipulate us to try to get us angry at one another to just look around and say, oh, it's all terrible. It's not all terrible. God has got great things for his church and we are blessed, blessed, blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We see things we've never viewed before on our televisions and our schools are infested with drugs and there is the threat of violence that has become an issue even within our church buildings. Listen, I'm not blind. I see it all. I see where people are going into churches and, and shooting at people. I see all the bad news, but I choose to look beyond the bad news and look in this book and see the great news because you can live your life miserable with all the bad news, but you've got to realize today God told me to come Come and tell you, everything isn't terrible. That's right. Right. Everything isn't terrible. I, I want to tell you, child of God, that according to this book, God's got a plan for your life, and His plans are for good and not evil. Right. 
you read the scripture, Jesus never walked around with his head wagging in the ground going, oh, it's horrible, it's hopeless. He knew they were going to crucify him. He knew people were going to die before they ever died. But he said, I'm the resurrection and I am the life. He knew that Lazarus would die and he would show up four days later and everybody else was crying and sad. But Jesus said, get out of my way. I'm about to call this man out of the grave. Amen. You see, it isn't all terrible. To Mary and Martha, it was terrible. And to the crowd that was crying, they saw no hope. But when Jesus steps on the scene, even a dead person can come back to life. Because when you got God in your life, it isn't all terrible. He's going to bless you. He's going to help you. He's going to recover everything that Satan has taken from you. Somebody say amen. 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 We read in our text today where John the Baptist was in prison. What do you mean? John the Baptist, the man who was, one day he's out there baptizing hundreds of people, calling them to repentance, and, and he's preaching, and God is blessing him. He even blessed and baptized Jesus in water. And when Jesus come up out of the water, they heard a voice that said, This is my son, in whom I am well pleased. And many said, This is the Messiah. What a great day. They rejoiced. They were blessed. But now John was talking about things that were sinful and he pointed out the sin of the local politician and when he did, the politician threw him in prison. You see, serving the Lord isn't all unicorns and, and bubbles and sparkles and glitter. Serving the Lord sometimes saying sin is sin will get you in the hot seat. And John was in prison and he began to say, well, is he really the Messiah or not? He began to doubt his own message. Have you ever had the devil sit on the edge of your bed and tell you you're not saved? You're not worthy to be saved. Sometimes the devil, he comes into your life and into your mind and he tries to point out everything wrong you've ever done. Every bad word you ever said, every mistake you ever made. But you listen to this preacher today, I don't care what the devil says, you've got to listen to what Jesus said. And Jesus wanted to point out to John, he said, you go back and tell John that the servants of John came and said, Jesus, John wants to know, are you really the Messiah? You see, when you start to believing the bad news, you'll doubt who Jesus is. I said, when you start believing the negative news, then you'll start doubting what Jesus has done in your life. You'll start doubting whether you need to go to church. And you'll start doubting whether you're a Christian. And you'll start doubting if Jesus really cares. See, that's the devil's job. He wants to make you think everything is terrible. But Jesus said to John's servants, he said, you go back and tell John. Tell him what you've seen with your own eyes. The blind eyes are being opened. The deaf ears are coming open. The dead are raised. The lepers are cleansed. He said, you go back and you tell him, blessed is the person who's not offended in me. You see, the devil wants to get you offended. He wants to get your feelings hurt. He wants to get you mad at somebody or... You see, that's all the, the only thing the devil's ever done. Even in the garden, he went to Eve and he said, God didn't say, God didn't really mean you can't have that fruit. You see, he wants to make you think your life is a mess. But you know what? The Bible teaches us that, that when John was in prison and rats were running over his feet and the, there was a threat upon his life and he began to doubt things, amen, that... Jesus turned his thinking around and said, it ain't all terrible, John. People are being healed. People are being blessed. Listen, I don't know what your experience has been in church. I don't know what your experience in Christianity has been. Some of us in this place, we have had our feelings hurt. We have had bad experiences in churches. But I'm telling you, the answer is not in church. The answer is in Jesus, who's in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Have I got my feelings hurt down through the years? You better believe it. Have I had people think bad things and say bad things about me? You know why that happens? Because we let people in the church that aren't perfect. 
and people that are still trying to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. I, I've had preachers to say things that, that hurt my feelings, but I had to go back to Jesus, who was the author and the finisher of my faith. Yeah. Yeah. Because listen, the truth of the matter is, I can't save you. I can preach to you, but I can't save you. I can't heal you. I can't deliver you. But I can point you to Jesus who can heal you, who can save you, who can deliver you. Listen, Jesus will always encourage you. He will always give you hope. Amen. 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 He said, you, you go tell John that everything isn't terrible. Hallelujah. God is still in charge. Does anybody believe that? Amen. Is God in charge of your life? Is God in charge of your finances? Is God in charge of your health? Is God in charge of your thought life? Is, you see, sometimes we let God be in control of what we want Him to be in control of. But the beauty of it is when you surrender and you let Jesus be in charge of all of it, then you'll understand that God knows how to take care of all of it. God will bless you. God will help you. Don't let, listen to what I'm going to say. Don't let the devil turn you in to an offended person. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, bless. He said, you go tell John that all these great things are happening and don't become offended in the way God is doing things. Amen. I don't like it when I hear that, that our missionaries have been thrown into prison. There's a pastor right now that we've been praying for. He made a trip to India and the Indian government is holding him hostage and will not let him come home to his family and to his church. I'm sure it's difficult for him. I don't always understand why those things happen. But I can tell you that when God brings him out, he's going to have a greater testimony than he's ever had. I can guarantee you God is keeping him and blessing him no matter where he is. Amen. Amen. Jesus is always in control. I've come today to tell you something. The good news is still alive and well. Amen. We call the gospel the good news. I call it the great news. Because yeah. it's better than good. It's great. The fact that I don't have to be a sinner, that I can be saved from my sins, that I can be filled with the Holy Ghost and go to heaven beyond a shadow of a doubt. I don't know about you, but that's great news. Amen. That's great news. When I'm sick in my body, I can come and the Bible says that if the the elders of the church anoint with oil and pray the prayer of faith. He'll save the sick. That's great news. The Bible says if I ask anything in his name, he's going to do it because he's my savior. That's great news. Hallelujah. The great news is still alive and well. A friend of mine, Pastor Tommy Galloway, he made this statement. He said the word, the world and people dear to you may have wrote you off. Some of you know what it's like when your friends turn against you and even your own family. They write you off. They don't care about you. But never forget that even if they wrote you off, Jesus wrote you in to the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. They wrote you off, but Jesus wrote you in to the Lamb's book of life. I can tell you today that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that David Scott Blaylock is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if my life would end today, guess where I'm going? I'm going to heaven. I'm glad about that. Everything isn't terrible because I've got a heaven to go to. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Get your Bible out and whip the trouble out of your heart. You know what? Sometimes trouble gets in our heart and doubt gets in our heart and hurt feelings get in our heart. And if we're not careful, even believers will begin to say, you know, everything's terrible. Everything is bad. Everything is hopeless. Everything is worthless. But when, when that begins to happen, when you begin to think that, get your old Bible out and begin to whip the devil with it. Begin to read the promises of God. Begin to force the doubt and the hate and the, the negativity out of your heart. Because the promises of God's word tell us that everything is not terrible. Right. Praise God. Jesus came declaring 
Great news to you and I. Great news. He's not going to leave me here in my troubles. Somebody say amen. amen. The great news is I might get in trouble. I might have problems. I might have situations that I don't like. But the word says Jesus will not leave me or forsake me. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible said he'd never leave me or forsake me. Even when I get myself in a mess. Even when I get myself depressed. Jesus is going to stay by my side even when tears are flowing down my eyes and I'm laying in bed wondering, God, where are you? He's right there with me. Everything is not terrible. God has never left me. God loves me. And I'm so glad for that. When you hear somebody say, it's just awful. My life is terrible. God just opened a door for every believer when you hear somebody say that. I was sitting in McDonald's the other day. Sorry, I know I eat there at that horrible place every once in a while. You know you do too. They can't sell all those millions of burgers and you not go there. We don't all eat healthy. But I was sitting in McDonald's with my wife and I heard a, a couple sitting next to me and they were talking about how bad things were and how situations in their life were just a mess and talking about different things and something rose up in me and I wanted to turn and, and I didn't and I should have. I wanted to turn and say to them, everything isn't terrible. I wanted to say, listen, let me tell you what God's done for me. Let me tell you what's happened in my life since I got saved. Let me tell you some good news that will trump your bad news. Amen. I can tell people because I can point people that are going through hard times to some of you. Just last Sunday we read testimony after testimony of people who have been in horrible circumstances. But God pulled them out. I'm telling you, this world needs to know the good news trumps the bad news. Amen. Every day of the week. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to tell that person everything isn't tell, terrible. Let me tell you what God has done for me. People say I have a hard time witnessing. No, just find somebody who's going through a terrible time and tell them, let me tell you something good. Let me cheer you up. Let me tell you what this book says you can have if you give your life to the Lord. Amen. Amen. The great news is, is Jesus gave me good news about the bad news. Listen to what John 14 verses 12 through 14 says. Jesus starts it off by saying, truly, truly. He's really wanting to make a point here. This is true. This is really true. I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do. Can you say amen? amen. The great news is that what Jesus did, I can do. Oh, well, I couldn't walk on water, Pastor. I couldn't multiply the fishes and the loaves. But listen... There are some things that we don't need to do anymore that Jesus did, but we have the same power in us that Jesus had in him. The Holy Spirit was in his life, and if you receive the Holy Spirit, then you can lay your hands on the sick. You can speak peace into the life of people that are troubled. Listen, it's all not all bad news. You've got something in you that's powerful. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. Whatever you ask in my name, I'm going to do it. If you're sitting in McDonald's and you hear somebody next to you saying, I've got cancer or I've got a sickness and I don't know what to do, their world might be terrible. But you've got the answer for their terrible situation. You can say to them, you can speak it in your heart. Whatever I ask in his name, he's going to do it. Pray for them in Jesus' name. Well, what if nothing happens? Listen, you can't think that way. You can't think like terrible thoughts. You can't think the negative. you got to believe that Jesus is going to heal them. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Because the word says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, everybody shout anything. Amen. That's a blank check, folks. That's like winning the lottery. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. 
Everything isn't terrible. No. Glory. Bad news says I'm sick. Bad news says I'm poor. Bad news says I'm alone. Bad news says I'm persecuted. And it may sound and feel terrible. But how many of you know you can't live by feelings? Right. Amen. Amen. But everything isn't terrible. Jesus made me a promise that if you ask anything in my name, I'm going to do it. Cancer, in Jesus' name, Lord, heal my cancer. Well, that sounds too simple. What did Jesus do? Jesus looked at the blind man and he said, go and receive your sight. Go wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam. When he would speak to a deaf person, there's so many things in the Bible that Jesus did, they couldn't put them all in the Bible. Sure. That's how good God is. Hallelujah. The Bible says he, he promised he would never leave you, he'd never forsake you. The, the scripture says, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod and thy staff, the, the rod and the staff of the shepherd is going to protect you. Do you know you've got a shepherd who's watching over your life? Amen. Do you know that you've got a Savior that is watching every step you make? He's watching everything you encounter. And it doesn't matter how it looks or how it feels. God is going to bring you out. Glory to the Lord. The Bible said goodness and mercy will follow me how many days of my life? All the days of my life. Goodness and mercy will follow me everywhere I go. Everything isn't terrible if you're in the family of God. Amen. You know why the worship was so beautiful in here today and so powerful? Because we come together and we combine our faith and we encourage one another. We give each other a hug and strengthen each other. Listen, we're stronger, we're better because God is with us. The reason I can get through life and I don't worry about every Facebook post. I don't worry about, you know what, the coronavirus uh, is on people's minds and hearts right now. I'm not the least bit worried about it. Because the Bible said he told his apostles and he told us, said if you drink any deadly poison, said it won't hurt you. Now I'm not saying go out and let people sneeze all over you and give you what they got. But I am going to tell you that if you get it, God will heal you. If you get it, the Lord will bless you to get through it because he's good to us. The, the real question that you have to ask yourself, you say, Pastor, I want to be in a place where I can think about the positive and not about the negative. The truth is, even us believers need to work on our thought life. The truth is, we all need to quit looking at every negative thing on Facebook and put it away and read our Bible. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Because there's so much garbage and so much trash out there. And if you have a steady diet of that, you are going to say everything is terrible. But if you can get your, your mind corrected and your heart focused, then you're going to understand that you've got something to be proud of. But it all comes down to this condition. When, if you're a sinner, if you've not been saved, you don't have the ability to change what you think. Because right. the Bible says if you're not saved, that Satan takes you captive at his will. But you can be saved. The question I want to ask you today is, have you been born again? Have you been born again? John 14, 26 through 27, it says, but the helper. We call the helper the Holy Ghost, but the scripture describes him as our helper. When you'd like to think something negative and you'd like to think it's all bad and everything's falling apart, the Bible says you have a helper that will speak into your ears and say, listen, it ain't as bad as what you think. One time I got some bad news and I was starting to get negative and I heard the Holy Ghost say to me, huh, you've been through worse than this before. This ain't nothing to you. And you know what? I got through that with flying colors because my helper helped me to understand. Amen. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And then he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. 
Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. How in the world can I keep from thinking bad things? How in the world can I keep from becoming negative? Let the Holy Spirit invade your thinking and let the Holy Ghost get a hold of your mind and it'll transform you. You'll put on the helmet of salvation and you'll walk through life saying, I know I'm saved and no devil can convince me that I'm not saved. Amen. Amen. You'll have peace in your heart. Not the peace that the world gives. The peace tell, the world tells you that you can only have peace if you got so much in the bank account. The world tells you you can only have peace if you've got this kind of house and this kind of marriage and this kind of car. But listen, that's the peace the world gives. But the peace that Jesus gives, you can be living in a cardboard box and know that God is in control and God is going to get you through. We've got to have the Spirit in our life to help us to have peace. Today I've come to give you some great news. You can have a brand new life, and you can have a brand new you. There are people sitting in these pews today that if you'd known them before they got saved, you'd say, wow, if God could save them, he can save anybody. That's right. Am I preaching the truth today? Amen. There's some people in here who have stood and gave their testimony, and you're thinking, I don't know how in the world they got through all that devastation, all of that turmoil, but listen... God can take everything that's messed up in your life and make you a brand new born again person. You're brand new. God doesn't remember your sin anymore. He cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. But you cannot have that unless you're born again. Right. Hallelujah. If you've never repented of your sins, the good news is you can do that today. Preacher, do I have to come and do I have to cry and do I have to make a big scene? Oh, no. See, I don't know if you've repented or not. Because I've seen people come to the altar and cry and leave that day and go out and get as high as a kite. I've seen people come and crush their pack of cigarettes on the altar and, and, and cry and the next day they're boozing it up at the bar. You see, only God knows when you've truly repented of your sins. And what repentance is, is it's crying out to God and saying, Lord, I want you to be the Lord over my life. I don't know how to do all this. Forgive me of my sins. I'm going to turn from running toward sin, and I'm going to run in the opposite direction. Today, you can simply say from the bottom of your heart, Lord, forgive me. I'm not going to live this way anymore. And God knows the moment you have repented. Aren't you glad one day you repented of your sins? Amen. Amen. If you've not made the decision to be baptized, make the decision today. Oh, I don't want to be embarrassed. I'll baptize you privately. I'm afraid of water. I'll sit you on a chair and I'll make it as easy as possible. I promise I won't drop you. If I think I'm going to drop you, I'll have two people in the tank. We won't drop you. But listen, Jesus said, go you into all the world and preach the gospel and baptize. Amen. Peter stood on the day of Pentecost. He said, they said, what must we do to be saved? He said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, you can receive him today. Right. It's just that simple. I can't give you any better news than that news right there. In the eyes of God, your old life will vanish and your new life will begin. You've got to start somewhere. And maybe repentance is the only thing you know to do today. You've got to start somewhere. You might as well begin believing that everything isn't terrible. Listen, I've talked to a lot of people in my life who have repented of their sins and they've told me this, my life is so different now. There are people in here today that even though it's been long ago that they repented of their sins, they will tell you everything changed after that day. Can I get a witness to that? Amen. Did God change your life after you repented and gave your life to Jesus? I wonder if we could stand today. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
I'd like, I'd like for everybody to bow your head, close your eyes at this time. Anybody who may be watching on Facebook is welcome to participate. But every one of us, every one of us needs to know that we've done what we need to do and we've obeyed the commands of the Lord. Amen. And the greatest thing you can do is repent of your sins. The greatest thing. And right now, if you know your heart's not right with the Lord, if you know that you're not born again and you'd like to be born again, let's take the first step. Let's take the first step and simply call on the Lord and repent of our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. And right now, if you feel the urge to repent of your sins, just lift up your hand. Nobody's going to watch you. Nobody's going to target you. Maybe if you're watching this today in your own home and you feel like, I've never asked the Lord to forgive me, then right now is the time to do it. All you've got to do is from a sincere heart, pray and say, God, forgive me of my sins. We're going to pray in just a moment. I'm not going to tell you what to say because God doesn't want a canned prayer. But if you simply ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and you tell him, Lord, I'm going to turn away from sin. I'm going to come following you. I'm going to read your word. I'm going to do the best I can. God will take that. And this will be the best day of your life. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, let every heart, God, that needs to repent today call upon you. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of every sin that we've ever committed. God, we ask you to help us, Lord, to walk in a new way of living. Help us, Lord, to forsake every sin. And God, help us to turn toward you and walk in the newness of life. God, we ask you, Lord, today to accept our repentance, accept the desire of our heart to serve you. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we believe your word is true in Jesus mighty name could we give the Lord a hand and clap of praise <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. amen listen if